Hey everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. Today I wanted to actually share kind of a teacher tech tip type video, but I don't know if you know this, a few weeks ago I actually uploaded a first grade end of the year review product that I made accessible in Google Slides so you can share it through Google Classroom, but I also made it accessible in Seesaw. And I wasn't very familiar with Seesaw until about, you know, two months ago when distance learning started happening. And looking through that platform and that website, I think it's amazing. It, if I were still in the classroom right now, I would absolutely try to use Seesaw if my district allowed me to, because I think it's really user friendly, it's visually appealing, and you can create so many fun lessons in there. So today I actually wanted to go ahead and share how I create lessons in Seesaw in case you wanted to create some of your own. So I'm going to go ahead and insert some videos of me talking so you can actually see it happening in real time. Let's go. So this is what the Seesaw dashboard looks like. I've added my name, I changed the color. To make an assignment, you'll click that green plus add button and you will press add activity. Then you will go ahead and create a new activity, give it a title and some instructions. For this example, I'm gonna show you how to upload a PDF that you already have or maybe you purchased off of TPT or some other educational website. So type in your instructions here. And there are so many things I love about Seesaw. Here you can actually add some instructions. You could do a little video of yourself saying, you know, hello to all your kids and showing them what to do. You could also do a screen share where you're showing them how to actually complete the activity. Then go ahead to upload. You will drop the file in. Now for this one, I have already split the PDF into just the three pages that I wanted to. I shared a video a few weeks back on how to split a PDF so you can just have the pages you want. I'll link to that in the description. But here it's a comprehension passage in two recording sheets. Something cool you can do here too is you can actually record yourself reading the passage or giving instructions. So if you have some students that can't read this on their own, but they want to go ahead and still complete the comprehension passage, you could do that. So here I deleted the recording and now I'm going to go ahead and add text boxes into the passages, into the recording sheet, sorry. And you don't have to do this. I think Seesaw is very intuitive and if you've already taught your students how to add text boxes and they're a little older, you can skip this part and just tell them to add them. But honestly, for first grade, I would like to have all the type here boxes already in there for them. That way they are less likely to miss any portion. So for this, this is the vocabulary sheet. They would basically insert the word that makes the most sense. You can go ahead and lock these, I'm showing you right now. If you press the three little dots next to or underneath the type here box, you can actually lock it, but just note that if you do lock the boxes, students can't type into it unless they click unlock. So here it's locked, I have to press unlock. Then you can actually go ahead, they can change the style of it or you can too. You can have it all shaded in. You can have it, I like it outlined, it's real easy for them to see. You can align it to the left, change the font, whatever you wanna do. But like I said, here in this one, students would basically read the sentence and determine what vocabulary word that was in the passage belongs inside the sentence to make sense. Then on the last page for this one, again, I would just insert the text boxes wherever you want them to go and format them in the way that makes the most sense for them. If for some reason you find yourself not being able to move it, just click that little hand, the pointed hand down in the bottom left corner and you can easily move your text boxes. Once they are all formatted and ready to go, however you like it, again, you'll play around with it to determine what kind of style you like for this, you will go ahead and click the green checkbox and it will save the activity. So you can go ahead and press save and then you'll be able to assign it to your students. So up there, the green assign button, you can press that and determine if you want to assign it to your whole class or you can click this button, the green one, and you can, or the blue one, sorry, edit students, and you can just click on the students that you want to assign this to. And then press assign, and in their classroom, they will have that activity assigned to them. 
So that is how to assign a already done PDF. Let's assign something else. So go to assign, create a new activity. Something really cool I've been seeing happen a lot is people sharing links to YouTube videos or something that you might suggest your students want to do. Maybe it's a craft or you wanna watch them do a lesson. Watch something on YouTube. Now this doesn't have to be something that they absolutely need to do, but maybe more of like a suggested activity. So here are some like math games that students can play. And you can actually go to link when you're uploading your activity. Here is a YouTube video I did with playing cards. If they have a deck of cards at home, you just copy the link right over into Seesaw. And when you press the green checkbox, it shows up like this. So it basically just tells students, hey, if you have a deck of cards, here are some things you can do at home, kind of like a suggested activity and you would assign it in the same way as you did our other activity. So you can either click on just a few students if you think you know students that might like that type of activity or craft or whatever. And again, it's not just YouTube, it's really any link. So now I wanna show you how I would do an activity with movable pieces. So here I actually would create it in PowerPoint. And so I would go ahead and create a table Let's say for this one, I'm gonna do a long vowel and short vowel sort. So you could do this the same way. I think it's easier to create the background in a different um, a different thing like PowerPoint or you know Microsoft Word, whatever you decide you want to create it in. So I'm just used to PowerPoint, so I'm going to do that quickly here. And if I was selling this on TPT, honestly, I'd probably spend a lot longer formatting this and making it look you know pretty. But here I'm just going to do long vowels on one side, short vowels on the other side. I will go ahead and add my fonts that I like to use and make it nice and easy to see. Then when you save it, you're going to save it as a PDF. Press save. And when you go into Seesaw, just like the close reading passage I showed you, you will assign activity. Again, you'll always want to make a title for the activity and you'll have to type in the instructions to your students. So this is a long vowel, short vowel sort. I will have students look at each of the pictures. They will have to decide if the image has a long vowel or a short vowel in it and then they will drag it to the right column. So that's the instructions for this activity. Then you will go ahead down at the bottom where it says add template just like we did for the other one, you'll press upload and you will put your PDF right in there. Then, ta-da, it is right there just the way you had it. Now for inserting the images, you'll go to the image upload and if you have your own clip art or you find images online, however you wanna do it, you can just insert the images directly into your Seesaw activity. So if this is for personal use, meaning it's for your classroom, you can go ahead and just find any image you want and just go ahead and use it in this activity. If you are selling this, you will have to look at each different clip artist's terms of use, if they allow you to use it in Seesaw or if you have to edit the image in some sort of way. But once you have modified the images so that they can work correctly, you will still just save the image and then insert it right here into Seesaw. So there's some long vowels. Here I already own a ton of clip art, so I'm just searching for short vowels or CVC vowels, that'll be easiest. And I'll insert a few. Again, if I was really making this, this is just a sample, but I would spend more time um, thinking about what images I'm using and probably include a lot more. But just for the example, I have a mug, a pot, and a fox. You can change the size of them and then I would move them off to the side that way they're not already on the page. That way when students do it, they actually have to drag it to the correct column. Then if you wanted to, you could go ahead and add a page and let's say we want to extend this activity a little bit more. And here I'm just adding a text box that says, choose one of the words from the previous page and write a sentence. So don't worry about that little pop-up. I should have pressed dismiss, but I didn't. So here I am and I can just go ahead and drag this out and this one I might want to go ahead and lock. I'll add a type box here for them to go ahead and complete this part after they're done with the dragging activity. So I can add this right here. Again, maybe for this one I want to go ahead and make this stand out a little bit more so I'll add a blue background. 
then I will extend this a bit. I will lock that top one so that way students know just to type there. And that's just how I've extended another activity that someone else maybe has created or again if I created it myself and I just want to extend it for my students. So if they were doing this activity, this is still in the creator mode, but it looks the same when students are doing it. They would look at each of the images. They would simply drag them to the correct column like you told them to do. Bow, mug, and then they could go to the second page and they would actually go right into that type box and type in a sentence to follow the instructions that you gave them. So the fox was orange and white. And if you wanted to add another extension, you could actually have them highlight the word that they used using the little highlighter tool. Again, I think Seesaw is so cool. Then once it's done, you can go ahead and click the green check mark, just like before. They have it all in there. Now again, it is already done because that's how I had it. So if you were going to actually assign this to students, you'd want to remove all those images back off to the side. Again, then you'll just press assign and students will be able to complete this activity themselves, which is really fun. One last thing I do wanna show you is how to actually share an activity that you've already completed. So here, when you click those three little buttons, you can press share activity. And when you do the share link, you can actually copy it and paste it into your browser. And now this is important to say that you can only do this if you've created the activity yourself. If this is somebody else's paid work, you can't just share it with anyone, but you would basically just press share activity and they can download it right to their library. So if you are selling it yourself and it's your own work, you would click that share link and that's what you would share with buyers and they can just download it right to their Seesaw library. So yeah, those are some things I love on Seesaw. So there were a few different ways you can go ahead and create activities in Seesaw. If you happen to use this in your classroom already, let me know what you think as a teacher down in the comments and let me know if your students are liking it as well. I'm really interested to kind of watch this platform grow and I just think so many more teachers are able to use it now because we are teaching virtually. As always, if you like this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and definitely click that bell if you want to be notified of any of my new videos. Talk soon. Bye.